From Viking invasions to Roman occupation, from countryside to coast, from historic wars between the English and the Scots to modern warfare, from a Scottish queen to a gypsy queen, from an artist from Manchester who regularly painted here to a local heroine who became a national icon, to boots discarded from weary walkers, from churches and abbeys to the ruins of priories and stunning scenery on the way. Join us over the next few weeks as we follow the route of the stunning Northumberland 250. Just a quick visit to Craster. Just paid for parking for an hour. Get on the steep side, £2.30 for an hour. And you can smell we're by the seaside. Yes, it definitely smells seasidey, doesn't it? And he's still pulling. He won't in a minute when he sees it properly. We're hoping we can find a coffee somewhere here. There's a sign there that says a Jolly Fisherman and Shoreline Cafe. That's handy to know. Nice little harbour. We can stop here overnight if we paid a tenner. a little seaside village isn't it mm. we came to see here but neither of us like kippers do we it's a long time since i've tried one but apparently this is the best kipper shop and craster is famous for its kippers the famous craster kippers I also do traditional smoke salmon. Oh, you can see the smoke. Smell the smoke. You can see the smoke. <laughs> but we don't want to buy any fish. I just want to show you this. This is what Craster, Craster is famous for. And I might have cheated because in the van. We can have crab sandwiches one day because we've got a tin of crab <laughs> meat. Just in there you can see the fish. Back. Stay, Stay there. there. Stay there. I vote tea. Here's some of the fish. There. Smoke out. You can see the smoke. I'm not the biggest fish eater, to be honest. Unless it's got batter on it or breadcrumbs. You don't 
a big fish eater, are you really? No. We tied the dogs up outside while we went in there and I saw this lady stood outside looking through the window with a look of help on her face. Nav had blocked the way so that she couldn't get in. He's like, you're not going in there, my dads are in there. You're not going in there at all. Very quiet little village, isn't it? It is. Bought the truck just coming out of the uh, fish place. And while we're here, the cafe's closed because of a family funeral, so we're not having coffee. I'll have a quick look down here and move on. And that's Dunstanborough Castle, I think. Dunstanborough Castle. Over in the distance. to see or doing Craster? No, but uh, got the uh, fish, the lobsters and gippers, hasn't it? Yeah. World famous. Apparently. Apparently. And the coffee shop was shut. Yeah. Then. Onwards. Then. Mm -hmm. Let's see. From camper van, you would say. The harbour is an important cultural landmark within the Northumberland coast area, outstanding in natural beauty. And the castle ruins we saw in the distance were Dunstanborough Castle. The ruins date back to 1313 when Thomas Earl of Lancaster ordered the building of the castle with its massive moat and formidable gatehouse, curtain walls, and defensive towers. The castle must have appeared impregnable. The castle itself was later fought over and ruined during the War of the Roses. Never restored, it remains one of the most dramatic and evocative landmarks on the Northumberland coast. But we're not going because we've got too much to see. We've got another stop off we need to get to. As I think we've said already, there's so much to try and cram in to 12 days. We can't do everything. We were going to get out and have a little walk here. We're in Embleton, but there's nowhere to park. And we're actually parked just outside a golf course at the moment. But over those dunes is Embleton Bay. And in the 1830s, a sandstone rock was discovered near the low tide mark on the Embleton seashore. Carved on the rock in low net let Carved on the lock. Carved on the rock in Roman lettering were the words Andra Barton. Andra, or Andrew Barton, was a Scottish sea captain and a fearless freebooter. He was a mariner in James IV, King of Scots Navy. Well, no one can really say whether that stone was carved at a later date and then somehow ended up in the sea, or whether it was carved at the time. But we just thought it was an interesting fact to share with you. As I say, we're going to have to move on again because there's nowhere to park here. Nowhere to walk. The clouds are coming in. It's getting breezier. We've arrived in yeah. sea houses. And when I've Googled on the way here, it said, it's the Blackpool of the Northumberland coast. And we've just seen our first slot arcade. Slots arcade. We're in search of a coffee more than out and possibly find out about a boat trip. 
Lots of chippies around. Not so far, both closed. Right, there's the Found islands. Ones. got Farn Island with the buildings on the top uh -huh. and you've got wide open west, wide open east, the little bits in the middle of the bush. The one with the building on is Brown, Brownsman and you've got Staple Tower, Staple Island rather and Longstone at the end with the lighthouse. Which is the scene of Grace Darling's famous rescue on 7th of September 1880, no sorry, 1838. I wonder what goes on here because you've got terrace seating. Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite the mine I can call, what was it? No. And these are all tourist boats. Take you on a boat trip, but I don't know because like I said the weather's turning and there's a storm coming, allegedly. Billy Shields is something that I've read about. So it might be a case of coming in the morning and just seeing. Oh dear. Oh dear. Do you think he would? I doubt it. We could try. Said about, cure. said about the uh, weather changing, just about the first spots of rain. Mm -hmm. We only want a short trip anyway. Um, this is Billy Shields I picked up. Same one. We'll take leaflets and we'll study them tonight. Once we're parked up. I don't think we'll be taking nab on, do you? Oh. Some of the leaflets tonight. Is that another company you've got? Yeah. You can buy a crab pot. About Grace Darling. Born in 1815 uh, in Bamborough. She was the seventh child of nine. At only three weeks old, she was taken to live on Brownsman Island, one of the Farn Islands, where her father, William, was a lighthouse keeper. In 1826, the family moved to a new lighthouse on Longstone. She was famous because at four in the morning on the 7th of September 1838, during a violent storm, the steamship SS Forfarshire struck the big Harker Rock on the farms and over 40 lives were lost. Grace saw the wreck. Half a, half a mile from Longstone and at 7am spotted survivors. William Darling thought that the conditions would prevent the launch of the Sea Houses lifeboat, so together he and Grace launched their cobble in atrocious weather. The strength of the tide and the force with the wind force forced them to row for nearly an, a mile to avoid jagged rocks and reach the survivors. Here William went ashore while Grace kept alone kept the cobble in position, rowing against the tide and gale. They took five survivors back to the lighthouse 
William and two of the crew then returned to fetch the rest. Newspapers reported the rescue and Grace hailed the maid of the sea, soon to become a national hero heroine. <coughs> I first heard about Grace Darling from Blue Peter when I was a child. That's where I first heard about her. They must have filmed a section on her. Some boats coming in. Um, Fishing boats coming in. They're getting ready to unload. <clears throat> There's a fleet coming in by the look of it. Yes, it's, it's quite a lot, isn't there? The second one coming in. There's another one coming around the harbour. There is a museum dedicated to Grace Darling. I think it's at a lifeboat house, but I'm not sure whether it's at Sea Houses or somewhere else. I wonder if they had a good catch today. That's unusual. Catherine Catherine fishing boat. The other one's not a, a boat, a uh, fishing boat, it's a, it's a, one of the tourist boats by the look of it. If you look at the catamaran fishing boat, it actually makes sense because they just haul the boat, the net, up onto the deck between the hulls. Oh, yeah. Some smaller fishing boats here. It's a hard life being a fisherman on the boats. Have to stick to quotas. Sizes of fish. Birds are actually going into the pots. On that side, you've got a sailing boat and a speedboat motorboat tied up. You got a bit closer, didn't you? What were they yeah, unloading? They were, they were just starting to unload uh, trays of lobsters and crab. But, uh, quite a big haul, he said. Yeah, uh, I heard him say that to chat. We've done all right. Uh, I suppose they are a little bit weather dependent, aren't they? Oh yes. Be, he said he'd be probably here till sun uh, till Monday now. Yes, yeah. Right. It's a harbour office. I'm just coming up from the harbour office. This is the fisherman's flat. For over a century, this elevated rise was a traditional meeting place for local fishermen, the barrows, boxes, barrels, etc. All dates from earlier times. Tonight's tea. Chop some carrots, 
the pepper, bell pepper, some red onion. I'm gonna get those into the pan and soften them up and then add some beef meatballs. Added the meatballs and get the balls nice and warm and cooked through. Tommy Chef's on strike tonight, he's reading. I am. Get the balls tanning nicely. Now they're cooking through nicely, we're going to add two packets packs of Sagaloo, which for those of you who don't know, is a traditional North Indian, it's hard to read in this light, delicacy of potatoes cooked with spinach and Indian spices. It's very green, but it's very tasty, we've had this a few times. Stirred in nicely, so we'll just turn the heat down really low, pull it on, and just let it cook for a few minutes. It's heated through nicely now, and it's ready to serve. 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 Six balls each. Three pairs of balls. Green doesn't look the most appetizing, but it is really tasty. This. Meatballs with Sagaloo. Verdict. Mm, tasty. Bit hot. Temperature hot. Gum off a hot stove. Got two very tired dogs. Not even looking what we're eating. Oh, there's a feeble wag of a tail there. You've been swimming, haven't you? Bay has. Good girl. So that's the end of day four. It's not a bad day again, done a lot. No. You've, uh... you've done a lot, yes, you've been for a swim in the sea, I know. I wasn't there, was I? I didn't see it. The castle was brilliant. It was a lot better than we anticipated really wasn't it it was there's so many castles in northumberland though that uh, we couldn't possibly do them all look at no, this dog okay. and bays she's very tired aren't you bay very so oh, you are very just tired cold. just she's missing her sofa cuddles at home so that's it for today that's day four over and done with and uh, we're parked up by a golf course tonight uh just outside sea houses and kettles on kettles on ready for a cup of tea so that's it for this one thank you very much for watching hope you'll come back to see what happens on day five bye